see here. There we go. Okay. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to uh, Open Atrium for Nonprofits today. We're really excited uh, to show you what Open Atrium version 2.0 is going to be able to do for uh, nonprofit organizations. Um, my name is Karen Borchert and I'm the VP of Strategic Initiatives here at Phase 2. And we are the um, lead team on um, the on Open Atrium and have been really excited to be a part of the community building Open Atrium um, and specifically Open Atrium 2.0. Um, we have a couple of guests with us today. Um, James Carlson from Bucket Brigade is here, um, as well as Dan Adams from Layton Boulevard West Neighborhoods. And we are really excited to have them to hear about and talk a little bit more about um, what nonprofits are, are actually doing with Open Atrium 1.0 right now and what they're looking to do with Open Atrium 2.0 in the future. So I'm um, excited to have them here and, and thank you to James and Dan for joining us today. Um, so today we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, we're going to just go through really briefly what Open Atrium is um, and how nonprofits can use Open Atrium. Um, then we're going to do a little bit of discussion about how a nonprofit might do some planning for your own uh, Open Atrium 2.0 site and of course see a demo of Open Atrium 2 and then talk a little bit about how to get started and get on your on your way with it. Um, so first off, what is Open Atrium? It's an important question. You, Make sure we get that groundwork started. Um, the first is Open Atrium is a collaboration platform. It's designed to help organizations manage their communications, teams, and knowledge. Um, so you know, there's a lot of, of social collaboration software out there right now, um, everything from um, Yammer to you know, SharePoint to you know, all of the Google apps that you might use. Uh, people are using a lot of different social collaboration tools to uh, manage their work and their people. Um, this is an open source uh, and completely Drupal-based uh, collaboration platform that is designed for, for that purpose as well and can uh, potentially be a great tool for your organization. Um, so open, what does it do? Um, Atrium has native features to support knowledge management, collaboration, and communication. Um, and then through its pluggable framework, it can also be extended to integrate with other with other applications. So project management or project tracking uh, applications like Jira or time tracking applications like Harvest or AppTask, wikis like Confluence or asset management like Alfresco or SharePoint. So if your organization or you use some of those things, there are opportunities um, to, to uh, plug those things in. Um, not every you know not every one of those plugins has been built, uh, but because this is a completely open source project and Drupal based, um, all of those things are are um, able to be you know able to be built and plugged in through through plugins. Um, some main features of Atrium 2.0 that I think are important to note, um, and probably one of the most important ones is uh, security through access control for individuals, teams, and organizations. And we're going to see and talk a lot more about that. Um, in, in, the, in the demo and in our discussion. Um, discussions, so moderated public and private conversations among your team members, um, teams and their constituents, volunteers, etc. Uh, knowledge management for file storage, collaboration and access. Um, simple multi-site or microsite implementation that allows you to kind of build um, some small hubs for chapters or for parts of your organization that need a smaller microsite or multi-site. Um, mobile ready. Um, it is. This is a, a mobile ready project. Project um, responsive themes and layouts all the way through, um, and then has, like I said before, pluggable functionality to connect to enterprise level applications. Uh, this is at this point custom work, um, but it's done as plugins so that you, um, you know, you're not going to see a product come about in the in the next year that is Open Atrium that has all of this stuff that you don't need. Um, we'll do them as plugins so that you can choose what you do and don't want. Um, and then finally, a really customizable layout um, that allows you to make Open Atrium look exactly like what you want it to look like. So um, Open Atrium can be used to manage projects and clients for a services company. Um, you could use it to meet your customers in a discussion forum, to build an intranet or manage knowledge with the wiki. Uh, to engage and inform through a web portal, or potentially to create an extranet for sharing access controlled information for business to business knowledge management. Um, 
and those are all, you know, those are things that all kinds of organizations will use, whether they're nonprofit or not. Um, but today we're talking about nonprofits, and we think that nonprofits have um, some specific and really useful um, things that they can do with Open Atrium. So we're excited to see that. So, um, like we said, you know, Open Atrium is for organizations of any kind with teams or clients affiliates who need a common platform to communicate and collaborate and manage knowledge. Uh, nonprofits could use Open Atrium uh, to manage multiple chapters or affiliates in the organization, uh, to share best practices, to manage volunteer groups, to engage community members in dialogue around their needs or around their community, uh, to communicate and actually really collaborate with your board of directors, and to manage events and organizational calendars. Um, so you may see an Atrium 2.0 customer that may have um, multiple chapters or affiliates, franchises, or brands. Um, you might see an organization with global, regional, and local communication needs, uh, multiple offices, teams, or branches, forums or networks of customers to engage, campaigns, projects, news beats, and aid, def aid efforts, um, or multiple project teams commuting with it, communicating with external clients. So um, just to show you, you know, kind of what we mean by that in terms of nonprofits and organizations that are that are looking at, at something like Atrium. Um, something like this, the Nonprofit Members Portal, um, the, this is the European Youth Forum that was that uh, was built with Open Atrium. Some of these are Open Atrium 1.0. We're going to talk about 1.0 and, and how nonprofits are using it now, and we'll also talk about 2.0 and how you can use it. Um, so, in the this this is a nonprofit members portal. You'll see some information. You know, you'll see things like public information, like press releases that people can anybody can see. Um, you see this members area for member discussions that's restricted, um, and you see some social sharing here that allows uh, people to to get their information out to the rest of the world. Uh, you also might see somebody using Atrium for collaboration for co-working. So um, one of our guests today is, is near and dear to this organization. Um, and you can see that, you know, they use Open Atrium to manage co-working spaces, um, you know, multiple co-working spaces. So you can see that, you know, there's events and, and event management um, discussions and, and you know, some of that can be public and some of it can be internal and private. Um, and members only information that that's uh, useful to members of the co-working spaces. You also see Atrium used for um, collaborative journalism and learning labs. Um, so this is a Atrium this is um, used for the PBS NewsHour, and this was used for groups of students who were coordinating and collaborating around um, around news. And some of their information and news actually got uh, produced original news reports for PBS NewsHour Extra. Um, so you see this group level access. So uh, a school could have, you know, a lab that is dedicated to their um, to their work. Um, you can see resource. You know, there's resource management here where people can they can store documents and information and resources. And you can see that public facing news piece again, where you can uh, get things out to the rest of the world. So Atrium allows this great opportunity for both public and private collaboration, which is pretty exciting. Um, the, another way that uh, we use this at phase two internally is for documentation uh, and for internet. So this is um, another distribution on Drupal that we that we maintain is open public, and the open public um, documentation site, uh, site is actually also built on Open Atrium 2.0. So this is an Atrium 2.0 instance, and you'll see so, a few things here. Um, so site sections and members that that are you know very visible, very changeable, and easy to easy to use, um, very clear access control so you know who can see which things, uh, media assets and the ability to embed or attach uh, videos, images, etc. And um, again, it's pure Drupal. So, you know, this um, toolbar, you know, kind of kind of gives you an understanding or shows you that, you know, all of these things can be changed and used um, with as much flexibility as a Drupal site. There's no special open atrium, you know, magic that is, you know, that, that is, um, that makes this not Drupal or that makes it not able to use the same kind of modules, plugins, um, apps, themes, etc. That, that Drupal uses. So it is pure Drupal. Uh, and then you can see here that, you know, documentation allows you to really get that, you know, in-depth documentation look uh, for an internet kind of capability. 
Um, and then colleges and universities can uh, also potentially use Atrium. Um, you can see the concept of uh, building microsites for departments. Um, and if you've seen any of our, our other videos or webinars, you've seen, uh, you've seen a, a demo of a college or university type um, use of Open Atrium. So um, that uses microsites for each different department of the college, uh, public information, uh, a student portal that allows students to connect one-to-one, -one, faculty resources that uh, may be available to faculty but not to students, and events that allow you to manage things that are coming up for your organization. Um, so before, instead of just showing you all kinds of different ideas of, of how you could use Open Atrium, um, I do want to um, have our guests tell you a little bit about how they are, um, how they're using and what they're doing with uh, Open Atrium 1 and what they're looking forward to in Open Atrium 2. Um, so we'll start there. Um, I'm going to ask um, James to start and just talk a little bit. You know, James has worked with multiple nonprofit organizations using Open Atrium. Um, I would love to just hear a little bit about, you know, why collaboration software you think is important to nonprofits specifically. Yeah, I think for many nonprofit organizations, um, especially these days, uh, getting away from some of the you know business 1.0 management practices, uh, working on you know in paper, working in in silos, Open Atrium Two really helps uh, get nonprofits working in in more modern fashion, especially uh, as it as it comes to recruiting new talent, recruiting new board members, new volunteers. Uh, Atrium can really enable groups to bring some efficiencies to how they work, um, get more of the information into one place so they can focus more on the mission and less on you know, the, the moving of the information around. Uh, so we've seen our, our organizations we've worked with and we also uh, run a nonprofit organization. Um, we've seen them you know, using Atrium to manage uh, pretty broad communities, to do project management, to do knowledge management. Uh, especially uh, board relations and volunteer relations and, and centralized procedures and documentation. So it's been really a, a good adventure. Great, thank you. Um, and Dan, can you, can you talk a little bit about what you guys use Open Atrium for and, and how you use it specifically? Um, yeah, definitely. So um, I work for uh, a small nonprofit. We only have nine employees. Um, what you think it would be easy to keep us all on the same page and you know focused on the same objectives, but um, as for anyone else out there who works in a small nonprofit, our work can get very messy. Um, you know, people at different hours, different places, different spots at different times of the day. And for us, Open Atrium has kind of allowed us to all to get on the same page, especially when it comes to the project management aspects of it. Um, it's allowed us to be a little more efficient and a little more transparent in who's doing what at what times. Uh, so tracking who's responsible for different aspects of a project, who's the lead on the project, um, gives us different areas to store information that's readily accessible related to the project so people aren't digging up different um, things from different areas that can kind of conflict with each other. And for our nonprofit, um, over the last year and a half to almost two years of using it, it's uh, really got, helped us to kind of get it all on the same page and kind of even continue working when we're not in the same room together, all our nine employees, which is amazingly hard to do with only nine people. <laughs> so it's really helped us get much more organized and much more efficient. That's great. Thanks. Um, James, did you want to um, take anybody through or, or show us your the way that you guys are using Atrium on your side? Sure. I can absolutely show a couple of examples. Okay, great. Let me just send this over to you. Okay, do you have, do you have, let's see here, sorry, there we go, okay. All right. All right. So uh, I'll show just a quick example here. Uh, one of our projects is called the Space Federation. Um, as Karen mentioned, we help uh, communities create and manage uh, collaborative spaces, co-working spaces, hacker spaces, maker spaces, and we use Open Atrium to keep our community together. So we use uh, Open Atrium's discussions capability to organize around different topics. Um, uh, our, our, you know, concepts around how to manage a space 
Uh, we also use the um, Open Atrium Knowledge Management to create a whole library of information for partner organizations on how to, um, you know, effectively uh, manage their organization, uh, work as a nonprofit organization, and so forth. Um, we also use Open Atrium to manage one of our actual locations, BucketWorks, uh, which is in Milwaukee. So. Uh, keeping in touch with all of our members. Uh, all of our members are, are part of our Open Atrium community. We also have uh, all the management of the space as a, a project management capability that we're using in Open Atrium. Um, we contributed the work tracker module to, uh, to Open Atrium development so that uh, our community can keep track of the different tasks that it needs to complete. So just a couple of simple examples. Um, being able to share information openly. This website is public, so you know we've had the wonderful experience of volunteers showing up at our doors, already knowing what we needed help with because our task list is public information, and they can just come in and look at what we need help with. And so we've had volunteers just show up and be prepared and ready to help us without any real extra effort on our part, which is a very powerful capability uh, for a nonprofit organization. Awesome, that's great. Uh, I'm gonna pass. Thank, yeah, thank you. Back yeah. To you. Perfect. Um, okay, great. Um, so let's let's keep keep um, discussing here. Um, I, I think the next question, of course, you know, maybe a lot of people have as they're looking towards Atrium 2.0. Um, Dan, are there things that you're really looking forward to, um, or features you're hoping to see in Open Atrium 2.0 that you think will will be a, a help to to what you're doing? Oh, definitely. Um, and we got a little bit of a sneak peek of a Open Atrium 2.0 a few weeks ago. Um, I mean, for starters, the ability to form groups and teams and then assign different sections of um, information according to those groups and teams, um, basically to be able to segment things a little more is going to be very big for us. Uh, like I said, we're a small organization with about um, nine employees. and Open Atrium has worked extremely well within our organization, within those nine employees, and we organize all the work we do and the discussions we have around that work within Open Atrium. Um, one thing we'd like to do is bring in many more of our partners. Being a small organization, and we like to tackle kind of bigger projects. Obviously, we do almost nothing on our own. We have a lot of different partner organizations. Um, we're, since being a community development nonprofit, we can constantly working with neighbors and businesses and schools and churches here in our area. Um, so positive bringing them into Open Atrium to um, take part in the work tracking process and the discussions going on there. And it's not that we couldn't do that with the previous Open Atrium. Uh, however, I think some of these new changes, being able to um, kind of give access to only specific segments um, will kind of help engage people and help us feel more comfortable about what we're sharing with some of our partners, where previously we'd been a bit nervous about, well, if we bring someone in, they're going to see everything else too. Uh, which, depending on what you're working on, can be a bit of an issue. Um, we're also very excited about the customization portion of it, being able to customize kind of how things look and where things go. Um, simply will just make it much easier, which I think will then further engage some of uh, our partners and even our own staff here. Um, with, with any new adoption of new technology, there's obviously different levels of an engagement, and we have some staff that are champions for Open Atrium and some staff that are um, using it not to that full extent, and I think uh, being able to customize it to how they would like to use it is going to just pull them in further into what we're doing. Um, I was also very excited to see in the beginning of your talk here um, additional uh, possible plug-in functionality with some other um, things that we use here in our organization that might tap into that. Uh, so I think all these things together are just going to make it much easier and efficient for our staff to use and as well hopefully attract in um, additional partners that we work with out in the community and other our organizations to uh, engage with us in another way, which um, I think will allow for a bit of a deeper level engagement. With a lot of our partners, you know, the only real conversation we get is every month or two whenever we can get in the same room together for a meeting. So be able to continue those conversations outside of those meetings using Open Atrium was going to make our relationship stronger and hopefully the projects and initiatives that we work on um, more effective and more efficient in their implementation. So we're very excited for Open Atrium too. Great, thanks. Um, James, anything to add to that? I, I probably couldn't have said that better. So uh, James, anything to add to that? No, I think that's the key thing. I mean, the, the, the new capability with 
spaces and sections is going to solve a whole number of business cases. As Dan said, being able to pull in external collaborators and you know the way of the future for nonprofit organizations is partnerships and collaboration with outside organizations and multilateral initiatives. So if a group of nonprofits can come together and agree to share information and uh, conversation in Open Atrium 2 and partition and share information according to you know transparency and privacy with those new capabilities, that's going to really extend their capabilities. And I think this is something that funders will also appreciate. You know, we've had uh, funders look at how we use Open Atrium as a nonprofit and say, wow, so you have all the information we need about the progress you're making on what we've funded for us to look at when we want to, uh, for us to see the measurement on what you're doing. Those are things that are really going to help nonprofits achieve their mission. And that's why I think Open Atrium 2 is a great fit for that. Great. Okay. Well, let's not uh, hesitate to look a little bit more at the spaces and sections concept. Um, that I, We are excited to show you what 2.0, how 2.0 is different and what you can do with, with uh, a nonprofit Open Atrium 2.0 site. Um, so I'm going to walk through um, the setup for a fictional organization um, and talk a little bit about, about how you, you know, how one might go about setting up a site. Um, and the first step to that is understanding a little bit about the structure of Open Atrium 2.0. So I'm going to go through some structural things. I'm, I'm going to warn you from here on out in this demo that I am not a developer uh, and I am not a, a highly technical person. So this is my understanding. I, I actually have a much uh, greater experience on the nonprofit side than I do on the, um, on the technical side. Um, and that's, that's actually something that's really exciting about Open Atrium um, and Open Atrium 2.0 is the ability um, for you know, for people who are site builders, people who are developers, and people who are are completely non-technical, um, to all be able to participate in this project and to and to you know build a really successful site with it. Um, it, it does not it is not a, a tool that it will be only for um, highly technical developers. So let's look a little bit about the structure. Um, so Open Atrium has a couple of different vocabulary words that you should know. Um, the first is a space. Um, a space is a subset of content within your Open Atrium instance that is shared among a collection of users. So a space um, could be used for a project or a department or a microsite um, or any other collection of related content and people. So um, it, it so spaces hold content uh, is the important thing to know there. Um, it, it is it, in Drupal in the Drupal world. It is an organic group that's not related to the spaces module. It's an organic group content type. Um, and then within those spaces are sections. Um, so you can see a section is a collection of content within a specific space that's tightly related or private to a specific set of users. So a section can be used for specific working areas within a space such as a discussion or a wiki or a calendar. Um, a section can be assigned very specific access controls uh, to limit its visibility. Um, and we're going to show I'm going to show you that in just a few minutes so you can see what this is all about. So, for content, you have spaces that are big and sections that are that are subsets of that. Um, in terms of people, um, you know, every <laughs> every organization has work and people, right? Um, so, so the work is covered by spaces and sections, and then the people are covered by this. So there are the space members. There are members, uh, spaces have users assigned to them called members. And members can have special permissions such as edit and, and create access within a space. Um, a group is a collection of users with related roles or interests that span across multiple spaces. So a group could be project managers or developers, or um, we'll see in ours, um, we'll see you know, kind of local affiliate coordinators or, or headquarters staff. Um, groups are used to assign access control to specific sections within specific spaces. And they're also used for notifications. So you'll see, um, a, so a group is very often uh, related to a role or related to a function. Um, and then teams are very um, specialized ad hoc collections of users within a specific space that share a very related purpose. So teams are used to assign private access control to specific sections within spaces. Um, if you want to think of it this way, you can think of, you know, if you are, as an organization, putting together a little task force or a little a meeting to work on a specific problem or a specific issue, that's kind of the same way that we use a team um, in Open Atrium. So um, this is a team is usually a, a subset of a space, um, 
sometimes they will um, span more than one space, but a, a team is a subset of a space and of, of some space members or of a group um, that work together on a specific um, a specific project. And a team can be members of different groups, and and we're going to see that here in just a um, in just a few minutes too. So um, this is the structure. It's kind of the official structure for Open Atrium, but I'm going to show you how we use it. You might use it for a nonprofit too. So. The next step that we really recommend is in terms of a, you know, somebody setting up an open atrium site or an open atrium project is to really map out your work and your people. Um, so nonprofits specifically should consider a few things. Um, who are your people? How do they interact? What is the work that you do? What is needed resource-wise to do that work? And how do your people accomplish that work? So in non a nonprofit example, you might have, you know, who are your people? You might have program managers and then volunteers. Um, and how do they interact? Well, they plan volunteer shifts and then they volunteer for shifts, right? Um, what is the work that they do? They may you know, tutor kids and then the program managers may report the results of that tutor uh, to funders, to headquarters, wherever. Um, what's needed to do that work? Uh, well, let's see, the volunteers need a place to discuss what they're doing and they need a shared calendar in order to make sure that they're using the tutoring center at the right time in the right place. And how do your people do that? Um, they share a discussion forum and a calendar, uh, and they coordinate volunteer needs and schedule shifts. And this kind of helps you start to understand how your different pieces of, the, of, of your atrium site um, and of your organization will, will work together and how they'll fit together um, in open atrium. So um, just as, as an exercise, um, I wanted to show you what it might look like to kind of map this out and, and take it all the way to an open atrium site. So this is a, a bit of a, a condensed version, like a cooking show where, you know, we show you how the ingredients go in and then, and then, and then bring out the uh, finished cake. So um, this is the, we're going to map this out and kind of show you how it might work. Um, so you might start to just kind of explain, you know, who you have. You've got your people. Um, you have, you know, some different things that these people do, um, and you start to understand, okay, this is, you know, this is what we are, this is what our organization looks like. We have these affiliates um, that all, that are each local affiliates, and they each have a direct service program, uh, and they report up to HQ, uh, and that, an HQ um, reports to the board, and that kind of thing. And you might start to map out those interactions, and that work, just like I said, in those, in those questions. Um, and what you start to see emerge are these concepts of, oh, you know, I think this could be a space, and I think these would be sections, you know. Um, I think these are some of our, our groups, and I think these interactions or these, you know, people that work together on these kinds of things might start to be our teams. Um, and as you start to write it down and map it out, you can really start to see some of those things emerge once you understand the structure of Open Atrium a little bit. Um, and, and once you do that, you can really say, okay, you know, what are the levels of collaboration I need in my organization and what's that going to look like? Um, so there's, there's kind of three um, that we're going to show today um, in this organization. So this organization is a, you know, national tutoring organization that has local affiliates. So um, at the local level, um, you might see a Boston program with um, several different collaboration needs. Um, for sharing tutoring resources and volunteer resources and a calendar. And then at an affiliate to affiliate or affiliate to HQ level, you might see affiliates sharing best practices with one another. So Boston with Minneapolis or Minneapolis with New York. Um, and then you also might see that kind of affiliate forum so that they can have conversations about what's going well. Uh, they might see a calendar to understand um, when reports are due. Um, and also, you know, things that are going on among the whole network. Uh, and this is, and then obviously there's an element in this situation of these affiliates reporting to a, a national headquarters. And then finally, you know, you might see um, the national headquarters reporting to its board. Um, and you see that, you know, kind of headquarters management concept or, or head office management. Um, and that's that interaction with the board. So sharing things like bylaws and financials and meeting calendars, um, and potentially a, a help forum where people can get, get assistance. Um, so in this organization, we kind of laid out these, these, different, these different levels of collaboration at the you know, purely local level on the left, moving up to a purely national level on the right. 
So once we mapped it all out, this is what it looked like. You know, we said, okay, we've got the HQ here in the middle. Um, we have these affiliates and, and each affiliate has some different collaboration needs. Some have a parents group and some don't. Uh, some have a tutoring center calendar and, and some might, might not. Um, but it doesn't matter because each, each local group can have kind of its own space to work with there. Um, and that's, that's part of the good flexibility with Atrium. Um, you can also, you know, have some spaces for things like the board resources, like the national management, as well as the affiliate to affiliate or network um, collaboration level that we talked about. So when you think about this and kind of map out your work, your space, um, you're able to start to see that in the context of, of Atrium spaces and sections. Um, so you start to see that these are the spaces, these you know, kind of larger pieces that, that are around uh, HQ. Uh, the sections are these smaller, more functionality-based uh, areas where are, they're a discussion or they, are, um, or they are a wiki or that kind of thing. And what you can really see emerge is this concept of, you know, this yellow, you know, yellow is sort of the hub, the, um, the, the site, the atrium site. The orange pieces are the, are the spaces in atrium, and then the green are the sections within those spaces. Now, I told you about spaces and sections, but I also told you about groups and teams, and we can't neglect those. So the other side of mapping out your work is looking a little bit at your groups and your teams. Um, and again, your groups are your people who share a function or a role, like HQ staff, or board members, or coordinators. Um, and your teams are people who might span several groups, but work together. So your board management team is going to be your board members, and your headquarters staff that work together on coordinating board meetings and minutes and that kind of thing. Um, whereas your volunteer teams might be a volunteer team lead and your volunteers, right? Um, and so when you put it all together, you can see all of the pieces come together. You've got your spaces, your sections, and then your groups, your roles that are, that are um, interacting with those different spaces and members of those different spaces. And then you've got your specific teams working in a section together. So your volunteer team over here, um, your volunteer team lead and their volunteers are working to you know, put together volunteer resources in that section. Whereas your you know, headquarters staff and your board members are working together on um, the board meeting calendar. Um, and again, all of these things in Atrium are allowed to be um, separate and all of these things are, you know, it's all one site. Um, but the site control and the access control allows you to really control who sees and who interacts in these different spaces and sections. So that's a space, that's a section, that's a group, and that's a team. So, of course, um, you probably don't want to see more and more uh, org charts. Uh, so let's see, you've probably seen enough org charts in your day. Um, so let's take it over to Open Atrium and I'll show you kind of what it looks like. Um, so, okay, so we will, uh, we'll take a look at, at what this looks like here. Um, I'm just going to double check that we aren't having any issue here. Okay, I think we're okay. Um, so this is the site that we set up um, in Open Atrium. And I am logged in now as a volunteer in the system. And so if you, this is coming into an Open Atrium 2.0 site, um, it's important to note that uh, we built this entire Open Atrium 2.0 site with um, with this site with Open Atrium directly out of the box. Um, absolutely no um, developer assistance or anything like that. So you could trick this out and theme it and make it absolutely your organization. This I wanted to show you guys right out of the box, um, so you could see what it looks like and um, and this is what it looks like. So um, all of these spaces, all of this, all of these sections and and widgets and everything that you see are completely and totally um, changeable. So if you're logged in as admin, you'd be able to move around and change the look and feel of any of um, these boxes. So this welcome box, the space box, any of these kinds of things. So because I'm logged in as a volunteer, um, I can only see certain things. I can see the things that I'm subscribed to or that are public facing uh, spaces. So I'm allowed to see the affiliate resources because I'm, I'm part of one of the affiliates. And I'm allowed to see Minneapolis because um, in this case, I'm a, a Minneapolis affiliate. And I can see myself as a member there, uh, which is useful. So up here you see in, the, in, in this, um, the different, the space, which is Minneapolis. And then we're at the space home, um, but we can see some different things. So 
um, if I go over to our tutoring calendar, um, I can see this really nice, useful calendar and be able to set up um, my tutoring appointments with um, students. Now, I don't see New York's tutoring calendar on here, and I don't see anybody else's you know, headquarters calendar on this. This is just for our center and for our space. Um, and I can um, actually also create events. So if I need to schedule um, time with a, with a student, um, then I would just go here and create an event, and I have permission to do that. Um, but this is private just to the people that are in the Minneapolis program. So this doesn't, um, this information in this calendar doesn't go out to, you know, everyone in the world. Um, on the other side, I can also look at the volunteers corner and uh, that's a place for uh, volunteers to, um, to share their experiences and show a little bit um, of, you know, have a little bit of discussion about how things are going. And I could, um, you, know, you can see as a volunteer, I have, I have posted this uh, reflection about bonding with students and then other volunteers can come in and respond and reply and that kind of thing, share information. This is all also an awesome place to collect testimonials that you might use for funding, um, funding kinds of concepts for your website, for that kind of thing. Um, if volunteers you know, give their permission for these kinds of reflections to be used, um, then you could see that. So this is, you know, again, this is a private space um, but you might make this space private to volunteers and their local and their local staff person. Um, and then once again here, because I'm a volunteer, I'm allowed to create a, another discussion post um, or a wiki page, um, but not administer anything else in the site. So um, just to you know just to show you what it looks like um, a little bit differently. So that's you know at a very this is obviously a very, very local use um, of open atrium, and that's that's good. Um, but there's also some other uses of Open Atrium, obviously. So if I log in instead as um, an affiliate staff member uh, and I say, okay, oh, of course that's going to happen. Let's try it one more time. Okay, so that's okay. I'm going to go over to here and log in as the admin up here. So if I was logged in as an admin or as a, as a staff member, um, I can see quite a lot more. So if I was um, a staff member, and you can see, as I said, you know, that when, once you're an admin, it brings up a lot more customization options and that kind of thing. So if you're in that second kind of level of, of communication and collaboration where you're collaborating with other affiliates, you might be on the affiliate resources space. Um, and that affiliate resources space has really different information and also really different, um, really different functionality. So um, this might have things like, you know, as a staff member, you know, your quarterly report guidelines uh, for reporting up to HQ. Um, or if I go over to this, you know, reporting results area, um, this is a private space just to local coordinators. And this might give me information like when my due dates are for uh, upcoming monthly reports, um, as well as monthly report guidelines and quarterly report guidelines. Um, and also a forum that says, you know, where us, where the local coordinators, so, you know, the Boston coordinator and the New York coordinator and the Minneapolis coordinator could say, hey, how are you counting hours? Or how are you recording this information? Or how are you recording that? You could also make this space available not just to the coordinators, but to the coordinators and a member of headquarters staff, so that staff could actually have a way to answer questions to those local affiliates, uh, which could be really useful. Uh, finally, um, there's kind of the affiliate forum, which is really similar to what you saw um, on the volunteer forum, but with a different level of access. Um, and then the best practices area, which is more like a wiki or a documentation space. Um, so here you can see um, some different, you know, different documentation areas. Um, you can see this, you know, people can, can post various, um, various pieces of information. You could have that, um, you could have that done uh, with some level of access control or approvals and that kind of thing. Um, and again, you can um, directly embed video uh, or, or images or assets uh, as well as attach them. Um, so from an affiliate to affiliate or affiliate to HQ level, um, the ability to share information and collaborate one to the next is, is really, really helpful. 
Um, and then finally, that last, um, that kind of last concept that we talked about was that board management. Um, and obviously, you know, the information that goes to your board is really private. Um, and it's really important for it to be kept private. So things like documents, bylaws, financials, et cetera, can be highly, highly restricted um, to just your board of directors and your development director or to your you know, CEO or executive director. Um, so in this case, you know, we're in, you know, sort of these documents and financials and you could see, you know, you could, you could post your financial statements or post your meeting minutes from your board meeting or that kind of thing here um, and know with absolute assurance that it is private to the members of this space and that's just the board. Um, you could also then create this, um, a section um, that has something like a how can I help section so that you could actually, you know, connect your board members with specific team members. Um, in this case, you can see that this content is only visible to the board of directors, a local coordinator, and the headquarters staff. Um, and that is really important. You know that that's the only people who can see it. Um, and a local coordinator could say, hey, I'm looking for some help in with my program in Minneapolis. Um, and, you know, somebody could say, you know, okay, um, you know, a board member could take a look at that and say, you know, hey, um, I know of a great organization, you know, they can respond to those sorts of things. Um, and the headquarters staff can kind of see the board interacting with staff or see the board interacting with the organization um, in a really open way. Um, so these are all ways that you can really use um, open atrium at these, at these different levels. Um, I'm hoping that this kind of shows you how those spaces and sections mm -hmm. and groups and teams really interact together um, in a in a really um, in a really great way. Um, these are all you know. This is the way that I set this organization up, uh, but this isn't the way that you know. None of this is constricted or restricted by um, by anything in terms of um, in terms of how you set it up. It's completely up to you, and that's why that planning stage is so important. Um, in terms of planning your site a little bit. So um, I want to make sure there's a little bit of room for um, a little bit of room for discussion or questions too. Um, so I want to note a couple of things about how to get started. Um, Open Atrium is absolutely available on Drupal.org. If you're a developer, you know what to do with it with an Open Atrium download or a distribution download. Um, you can go to Drupal.org and go to the Open Atrium project and download it. If you are um, a nonprofit organization and you are not as familiar with Drupal.org or you're not a developer, um, definitely recommend trying it out at uh, getpantheon.com. Um, you can go to getpantheon.com and load up um, a free, it takes about three minutes to install it, um, and it is a free instance of Open Atrium. You can take it and give it a try. Um, and give it, you know, and, and try out some spaces and sections and that kind of thing just to get a feel for it. Um, or you can, you know, you can, you can use it, you know, if eventually you want to, you can use it to actually host um, an open atrium site for your organization. Um, you know, you can try it for free. And then um, if you take it to a live site, then, then it, um, you pay for it with Pantheon. Um, but it is a great way to just get your hands into Open Atrium um, really quickly and really easily and for free. Um, so highly recommend that. Um, you can also connect with us. Um, we are at um, Open Atrium at Phase2Technology.com. Um, or if you are a Drupal developer and you're in IRC all the time, we are in the IRC uh, Open hyphen Atrium room. Um, and you can always reach out to us on Twitter at, at Open Atrium. Um, you can also reach out to our panelists. Um, you know, our, James and um, Dan are both really experienced uh, in Open Atrium and have a lot of great information and ideas to share. Um, and James and his group also um, work with multiple nonprofits on Open Atrium sites and instances. They've worked with um, dozens and dozens of organizations to build Open Atrium uh, collaboration sites on 1.0, uh, and they'll do the same on 2.0 as well. So. Um, we are really excited about where Open Atrium is going. Um, it is in alpha right now. Um, in the coming weeks, um, you'll, you will see Open Atrium release at beta release, which we're really excited about. Um, and then we're looking at a full Open Atrium 2.0 release um, later this year, so probably in Q4 of this year. Um, and you know, as it stands now, you can certainly use alpha and certainly use beta. Um, 
if you want to wait until the full, you know, stable 2.0 release, it'll be in Q4. Uh, but you could certainly get planning, planning and starting started on your site before that time. So um, we would obviously love to hear from you. Um, so would so would our guests, and I would be very very happy to answer some questions um, if that's useful to folks now. Um, we have about 10 minutes before we're finished here today. Um, I would be happy to take any questions. Um, you can post them in the question section if you want. Um, and uh, and if you, uh, you can post them in the question section. And if there's no questions, then uh, you can also uh, talk to us offline. Oh, I'm sorry that there was a volume issue. Um, and to answer the question, um, will the slides um, or documentation be available after the presentation? Uh, yes, I will go ahead and post these slides on SlideShare, and we will post a video of this webinar on um, Vimeo as well, in case you want to you know, watch it again. Um, OK. Uh, so the question from Chad Curry, is there any way out of the box to federate content, meaning I could write a blog post to the volunteers in my space, but share it to other spaces or the main hub? Um, yes, I believe that there is. Um, I think it's just a matter of doing notifications to different groups um, and or posting to multiple spaces. Um, I believe that there is a way that you can do that out of the box. I probably want to talk with you a little bit more about that, but um, the ability to share content um, between those spaces is certainly possible. Um, and from Jen Johnson, um, can you repeat when beta will be available? I believe it'll be available in Q4. Um, the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, beta. Uh, beta should be available in the next couple of weeks, uh, probably looking in the first couple of weeks of July uh, for beta. For beta. Um, and then Ian asks, how does this compare to Google Sites? Um, you know, I don't have a ton of experience with Google Sites. Um, I think that it, it I can likely. Speak to that. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Thanks. Sure. So Google Sites is really a um, designed for a small group of authors to publish a more or less static website. Um, it's uh, you know maybe a good starter kit, but I think Open Atrium Two brings a lot more of the um, management and functionality of people. So that notion of teams and groups that's not a part of Google site, everybody is just either an editor or a viewer. And there's no way once you're in to say, well, you're only allowed to change this or you're only allowed to change that. Um, and so a little bit simpler, uh, maybe good for the public facing website, but probably not so good for collaboration. Thanks, James, I appreciate that. Um, and then Chad asked, um, can we see how an admin would modify a dashboard? Absolutely, no problem. I can, I can show you that. Um, so if I am over here, um, if I'm logged in as an admin, um, and we'll go over to, um, let's see, we'll go to the board, recess, board resources um, space homepage. Um, I'm going to just go over here. So, um, if, if this is sort of the main dashboard for the board, um, you just would go if you're logged in as the admin, and that's up here, it says so. Um, you can customize this page. Um, Open Atrium is built on the base distribution Monopoly, um, which uses panels and Drupal, um, and has a really wonderful um, interface for adding and moving around content. So I could use, um, you know, I can simply drag and drop, um, you know, some of the spaces that exist around. Um, but then I can also add specific widgets and specific content to it. So if I just click on this plus and add a new pane, um, I can go in here and there's obviously you know, a ton of widgets available uh, to me. There are some specific um, to Open Atrium. So if I go to, let's see here, it's going to cooperate with me. Oh, good, it is. Um, so if I go to um, the Open Atrium um, options here, I might say, okay, um, you know, let's see, I'd like to look at the discussions topics um, it, that are in this space. So I'll just click add uh, to that. And um, this gives me a ni really nice preview on the right hand side here. Uh, and I'm allowed to post you know, whatever kinds of, of topics that I have here. We'll go ahead and, and put any and click save. Um, 
and then we would just have that there. I can move that around if I don't want it in that place. Uh, hit save. And then it will be there. And there, there's actually no content in that one right this minute, so I chose kind of a bad one to, cut, to add in. Um, but you can add in, like I said, any of these widgets, any of these places. Um, if you want to, you could add, um, you know, something like if you're, if you're looking at you know, your calendar of events um, and that kind of thing. Um, there's a whole you know, set of widgets and set of, set of blocks for Open Atrium um, events. And you can add in the Open Atrium calendar, um, customize that to what you want that to be. Um, and then there it arrive, you know, shows up right here in your site. And you can save. And there you go. And the more you know, plugins and things like that that we add, um, the more widgets there will be in Open Atrium. So you'll be able to see uh, more of those. And so now when you go to the Space Home, it looks a little bit different. Um, and you can you know, customize this. Um, as I noted early in the conversation, um, there are multiple layouts um, for any of these um, for any of these pages and any of these panes. So I'll just show you that really quick. Um, you know, you can choose to lay you know any of these layouts, and all of these layouts are responsive. Um, so they're they're all going to resize with your um, browser depending on what kind of device you're on, um, and they are all you know these all come with Open Atrium out of the box. So um, I hope that's I hope that's what you were looking for. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, Ryan Miller asks, um, a lot of collaborative workspace options, what makes this distinctive from competitors? Um, it's a great, great question. Um, thank you for it. It's, uh, I think Open Atrium, you know, you're exactly right. There are a lot, a lot of collaboration uh, workspace options. Um, one of the pretty exciting things about Open Atrium, um, really and truly is it's its flexibility, and that's in part because of the way it's built, and it's in part because it's open source. Um, so the ability for, you know, this is this is pure Drupal, um, so the ability for you to add, you know, any integration or module or uh, piece of functionality that you really feel like you need um, is is a really key component um, to, to Open Atrium versus something, you know, like SharePoint or something like that, where you would be building custom, you know, Building major, you know, kind of custom things if you could, um, but you can't because it's, you know, kind of a locked-in software, um, it has locked-in features and that kind of thing. So the ability for you to change Open Atrium as your organization changes, and as the software collaboration mm -hmm. space changes, um, is a really useful thing to be able to keep the life of this product really have a really long life in your organization. Um, nonprofit organizations have. Um, no shortage of things that they would like to um, be able to provide and be able to do um, in their organizations and the ability to just change up which software tools you're using every single year, every couple of years, um, is not a luxury that most nonprofits can, can afford to do. So um, I think it's it's really, really key to be able to choose, a, especially for nonprofits, to be able to choose a software um, option that offers a lot of flexibility and a lot of ability to extend year after year um, to be able to do what you need it to do. Um, and plus, the other thing about that is that, um, you know, since it's open source, it's it's free out of the box. So, you know, obviously getting it started and getting it, um, you know, getting it working in your organization, customizing it, and that kind of thing um, is something you'll have to consider as part of the cost of ownership. But the actual software itself uh, and, the, and the download and all of that is absolutely completely can I uh, just say something to that, Karen? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Um, I just want to chime in from uh, our point of view as a small nonprofit. Um, we had started working with James's team at Buckworks from the get-go, and we had looked at a couple of other options, kind of for project management software and whatnot. And it was that customization and the ability to kind of grow with our organization and change as need be that locked us in. And a good example of that is now we're actually working with James's team to develop a system within Open Atrium to track a lot of the data that we both produce and then collect. Um, so that it's all in one place along with our project management and communication tools all within Open Atrium. And I think with other software that just either would not have been an option or had been prohibitively expensive or just very difficult to do. So for us to be able to add on these things as we kind of evolve and realize we need them has just uh, been a huge benefit for us. And it's been very helpful working with James's team over at BucketWorks uh, who's really done all the heavy lifting around that. Yeah, and, and the fact that you're able to... Thanks, Dan. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact that you're able to to potentially reap the benefit of other people sort of discovering things and working on things. You know, when one organization says, "Well, we really need a work tracker. We really need the events to work a little bit differently." Um, they can contribute that module and that and that back to the open source project, and then um, you know, really the network, the network and the and the software and the product really benefits from from that development across the network, which is which is an exciting thing to see. Um, one more question: Chad asks, um, "Is there a module app store like an open public?" Um, the answer is not yet, um, but Open Atrium is built with all of that functionality built in. So. Um, because it's built on Panoply, and Panoply is an app-friendly um, interface, uh, there is the there is the possibility for apps. Um, it is something you know. Right now, uh, we didn't want to say, okay, we're going to build all plugin functionality as plugins or apps or you know in any one specific way. Um, so in the alpha and beta, um, you will not see that. But I think um, going forward, you will probably see more of a, a formalized you know quote app store. Um, in open atrium similar to open public it's a great question thanks all right uh, I think that's all the questions and and here it is uh, uh, an hour past um, after our, our start so um, I think that is all for today um, I want to just say thank you so much for attending today um, please reach out um, you can reach out to me directly via email or to open atrium at phase two technology com if you have any specific questions um, that you didn't get answered today, um, and we'd be happy to to help you out with those questions. Um, and really excited for you to, to check out Open Atrium. So, um, thanks again for coming, and we will um, we'll be doing more uh, webinars and demos throughout the summer um, and this fall. So please um, please keep your eye on that, and we'll make sure to to let you know when those are as well. So, thanks again, and have a wonderful wonderful afternoon. <laughs>